Evet bir sonraki e, konuşmaya başlığa geçiyoruz. Mr. Cruz'u bir kez daha podyuma davet ediyorum. BPA'da medikal tedavi nereye kadar? So uh, this time is to talk about how long we should continue medical treatment in the management of BPH. And Mr. Chairman, uh, uh, I must say that this is a very tricky Uh, uh, topic, uh, 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 we'll see how we can uh, uh, solve the problem. Because uh, I think the correct answer is we don't know exactly. Uh, of course, we know that BPH is a continuous disease. Uh, and uh, uh, so from this point of view, uh, uh, if there are symptoms and symptoms tend to increase with age, we would expect that the treatment had to be maintained for a long time. We also know from the Olmsted County that uh, the Qmax tends to decrease with age. So again, ev an evidence that a continuous treatment would be expected. Uh, and uh, uh, we have plenty of medications, and uh, uh, so alpha blockers, five alpha reductase, and uh, beta-3, PD-5 inhibitors, uh, desmopressin for younger patients. Uh, all of these drugs probably had to be maintained for a long time, and clearly among them, uh, the five alpha reductase inhibitors need to be maintained for a long time if some improvement uh, is expected from them, uh, also in uh, different combinations. But clearly, uh, physicians do not uh, uh, arrive to an agreement. And this is a survey uh, carried out in France. It was Francois de Grandchamp uh, who gave me this slide. And uh, uh, the gray and the brown slices of the pies indicate this Uh, indicates the, the, the percentage of uh, urologists and general physicians that would agree in maintaining for at least one year the medical treatment. And you see that there is no agreement. General practitioners tend to maintain the treatment longer than urologists. Of course, uh, uh, I also want to exclude from this discussion Uh, the clear indications for surgery. Uh, 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 we are not going to maintain endo medical treatment patients with renal insufficiency, with persistent urinary tract infections, hematuria, uh, stones or diverticuli, or that uh, have uh, uh, persistent urinary or frequent episodes of urinary retention. Uh, of course, patients who do not respond to uh, uh, medical treatment also should not uh, be maintained on medical treatment, as we will see. One of the problems when analyzing this question is that most of the data is coming from the placebo arms of, 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 of uh, randomized clinical trials. And uh, 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 this is an example, the MTOP study. Uh, this is the placebo arm of the MTOP study, and you see that the progression Uh, uh, due to acute urinary retention, due to surgery, or due to an in increase in four points in the AOA symptom index in green, uh, uh, all summed up might indicate that uh, the progression was about 20% in this group of patients without any treatment. But the problem was that this group of patients, in fact, had uh, a, a, a criteria for inclusion. They had to have at least an IPSS of eight. So what happens if the patients have lower IPSS? What happens to patients that have uh, an IPSS at baseline below eight? And this is a classical study from Bob Javan and uh, 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 he included patients uh, with uh, very low or absent symptoms. And after four years of follow-up, what he saw was that only 30% of the patients had progression, and that progression 
uh, corresponded to a switch into a moderate uh, 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 size of symptoms. That means that uh, they change from a low IPSS to a moderate IPSS between 8 and 18, and only 7% had severe IPSS after four years of follow-up. So uh, this means that uh, a large number of patients will not progress. Also, uh, and uh, we already uh, had uh, information about the upstream study, uh, uh, if you look uh, to the full lines that indicate patients that were not operated, we see that uh, the oral dynamics will not help us to uh, 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 select the patients that should maintain or not the medical treatment because oral dynamics and routine care uh, led to the uh, same IPSS at 18 months of follow-up. So, in my perspective, uh, the logical approach to decide if a patient requires uh, a, a, a persistent treatment is the identification of risk factors. And uh, the risk factors are age, serum PSA, prostate volume, baseline symptoms, baseline Qmax, uh, baseline post void residual. And in addition, if you want, the type of medication you want to use because it is different if we use 5 alpha bradyptase inhibitors or other drugs. From the Olmsted County, we know that starting uh, from the top left, we know that uh, patients at the age of 17 or 70 or plus have a higher risk of urinary retention Patients that have severe uh, uh, scores in the AUA symptom index, which is the same as the IPSS, have higher risk of urinary retention. We know that patients with large prostate volumes uh, have higher risk of urinary retention, and the patients with low Qmax have higher risk of urinary retention. So from the Olmsted County, we have four uh, uh, risk factors that we can identify in our patients to decide if the chronic treatment is indeed required or not. From the PLAS study, PSA emerged as a very good marker uh, to identify the risk of progression. This is the placebo arm, and uh, the blue line indicates the patients that have lower uh, levels of PSA, a serum PSA, and you can see that the uh, increase in uh, 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 IPSS did not occur. Actually, these patients had a decrease in IPSS despite the fact that they were in the placebo arm. On the opposite, patients with higher PSAs in green or in purple, clearly they had a progression being in placebo arm. So, PSA is a good indicator. If it is high, it might indicate that the patient requires a persistent treatment. And still from the PLAS study, and again with PSA, we can see that the risk of acute urinary retention and the risk of surgery is increased among patients that have higher values of serum PSA. Again, from the placebo arm of the PLAS study. And this study uh, from uh, Klaus Renborn, uh, measuring the prostate volume, uh, clearly shows that the patients that have higher uh, prostate volumes have a higher risk of uh, acute urinary retention. So prostate volume, again, is a, a risk factor to uh, uh, complications and so a, a good indicator to maintain persistent treatment. The Baltimore longitudinal study also gives us some information. So the risk factors that were investigated were three. Change in size and force of the stream, sensation of incomplete emptying, and the size of the prostate investigated by digital rectal examination. And as you can see, the probability of surgery increases as the number of risk factors are present. So, again, the number of risk factors might be a good indicator in order to maintain 
persistent medical treatment. What can we expect from medical treatment? Uh, we uh, should expect something like an improvement in average of five points in IPSS, not more than that. Uh, and this is something that we should explain to our patients. We should not expect an increase in uh, IPSS uh, in the order of 15 or 20. That does not occur. It is, in average, five. And that is from the AWA in uh, uh, 2003. It's a very nice graphic. And uh, from that graphic, uh, um, Francois Desgranchin made this study, which is uh, curious. So, uh, which are the patients that should maintain the treatment, the medical treatment with alpha blockers? Are the patients that responded by an improvement in IPSS. Those that had a good improvement uh, had a lower risk of acute urinary retention and a low risk to go to surgery. On the opposite, the patients that had uh, 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 no improvement or actually had worsening in low urinary sex symptoms despite of the fact that they were under treatment at a higher risk of acute urinary retention and surgery. So another risk factor that we might identify among our patients to decide if we should prolong or not the medical treatment. Prostate volume influences the outcome of, uh, uh, of alpha blockers. Uh, we know from Peter Boyle that uh, the increase in size in prostate uh, will decrease the efficacy of, uh, uh, of uh, alpha blockers. And uh, uh, we know from the COMBAT trial that patients that have larger prostates, you see that there is a gradual uh, uh, um, uh, uh, decrease in the improvement of IPSS, while the patients that have smaller prostate volumes have a uh, good persistence in the response. So again, the volume of the prostate and the, the response might be indicators to maintain or not to maintain the medical treatment. The uh, uh, pre presence of metabolic syndrome is also important. We know that Alpha blockers, uh, when metabolic syndrome is present, will have a poor response when compared uh, to the same alpha blocker given to patients without metabolic syndrome. What from combat trial? What can we uh, get? Uh, what information can we get from the uh, combat trial? Uh, on left side, patients with large prostates, we see that the patients that benefit most are the patients with large prostates uh, and they benefit from the test ride or combination. But uh, uh, tensiles in, uh, alone in gray, you see that there is a deterioration uh, in IPSS. And the same on the right side for high PSA. So again, as risk factors, prostate volume and PSA in our patients might predict the response and might indicate us how long we should maintain our treatment. The type of medication is also important. If we select 5-alpha reductase inhibitors, we have to inform our patients that we must prolong the treatment for a long time if some benefit wants to be obtained. In the first year, the improvement according to the PLAS study from finasteride is very reduced and increases with time. And if we look into the risk of acute urinary retention uh, in patients that received uh, uh, the finasteride or the test ride, we see that Time is critical for this kind of drugs. We, if we start a medication with 5-alpha reductase inhibitors, we have to tell our patients that they need to maintain the treatment for a long time. Otherwise, uh, it will not be effective. In addition, we know that we should not offer these drugs for patients with small prostate volumes. 
But of course, maintaining the treatment, if we are very good in identifying the risk factors and if we select very well the patients that should maintain the treatment for a long time, we might have this consequence. And this is from McGill. And they divided the patients that had uh, uh, prostate surgery in three groups until 2004, from 2004 to 2009, the group two, and the group three from 2009 afterwards until 2014. And the, if you follow the red lines, you see that nowadays in McGill, they are operating patients that are clearly older, that uh, had a longer period of time on indwelling catheter, patients that uh, have larger prostates and so might require a more complex form of surgery, uh, patients that had a lower uh, 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 Qmax at, uh, uh, before surgery and that had a higher PSA. So patients that were older and in general in eventually poor conditions. So that lived several years in poor conditions. Uh, and so we have to consider that uh, maintaining chronic treatment might conduct to, uh, 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 to operate at a later stage patient, patients in uh, poor conditions and maintain those patients uh, uh, with bothersome symptoms for longer periods of time. So, in conclusion, no studies tell us for how long medical therapy should be maintained. Therapy should probably be maintained in patients with risk factors for BPH progression. And that is part of our routine care. We can identify them during our uh, medical examination. Uh, therapy should be maintained in patients who show symptomatic and quality of life improvement. If they don't show improvement, so we should stop, of course, the treatment. And we should be careful about not overstretching the medical therapy to avoid surgery in patients that, uh, in overall, we are going to operate in poor medical conditions. Thank you very much for your attention. Evet, Mr. Kuruz'a çok teşekkür ediyoruz. Podyumdan soru var mı? Evet, buyurun Tufan Hocam. Francisco, çok teşekkürler bu güzel sunum için çok teşekkürler. Benim sorum şu, kombine tedavi başladığımız bir hastada tedavinin 6 ayı dolduktan sonra ve biz tedaviye istediğimiz yanıtı aldıktan sonra alfa blokeri kesip sadece 5 alfa redüktaz inhibitörleriyle tedavinin aynı semptomatik başarıyı devam ettirdiğine yönelik bazı çalışmalar var. Bu konudaki yorumunu alabilir miyim? Uh, that there is one study that did exactly that uh, mm -hmm. after uh, I'm not sure if it was six months or 12 months of combination therapy uh, the uh, alpha blocker was uh, I think the alpha block was stopped and only the 5 alpha reductase inhibitor mm -hmm. that was already doing some effect was maintained and with good success, but there is only one trial. Nowadays, the truth is 5-alpha reductase inhibitors are not the first option, and there is a lot of adverse events uh, caused by long-term long administration, like persistent erectile dysfunction, and you should be careful mm -hmm. about the administration of those drugs in younger patients. Belki yaşlı hastada, cinsel olarak inaktif olan, olan hastada alfa blokerlerin uzun dönemde e, otostatik hipotansiyon açısından risk faktörlerinden kurtulmak istediğimiz hasta grubunda e, belki geçerli olabilir. Teşekkür ederim. Yeah, evet. although in that case we can have also the most selective types of alpha blockers that will not act on alpha 1B receptors. Evet, Mr. Kurus'a çok teşekkür ediyoruz. Ha, you have the course. Quick question. Okay. Thank, you, thank you, François, for the beautiful presentation. Uh, I have a quick question to, to you. In the Canadian study, the last the slide you showed, 
um, was the was the outcome different uh, with the surgical intervention based on group one, group two, group three? Like, did group three do worse than group one? As far as I remember, that was not in the study. Okay. Uh, they only analyzed the baseline characteristics of the patients in different uh, at different time points. Okay. Uh, so eventually, uh, I'm, we might expect that the outcomes were different, but the age of the patients were also substantially different, and so eventually the outcomes might be different, just for the age. If, what do you think about the use of uh, a artificial intelligence in prediction of outcomes and where when patients fail medical therapy? We did a study using the MTOP data, yeah, and we created an algorithm. Is this something that you might uh, want to investigate? Have an app in your hand, say, put the numbers in and tell the patient you have a risk of failure versus you don't have a risk of failure based on AI? I think uh, uh, this is one of the areas where artificial intelligence and big data might help us to uh, 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 pick up the patients that really benefit from the continuous medical treatment or uh, on the opposite to avoid continuous medical treatment. And so let's hope that artificial intelligence will be used to uh, in selected group of, uh, of pathologies, uh, like, let's say, uh, in order to uh, improve uh, the quality of the management. I, I agree with you. Artificial intelligence will be useful. Thank you. Evet, son soruyu da Ömer hocamızdan alıyoruz. Teşekkür ediyorum. Ben bu bir yaşlı hastada alfa blokör başlarken tedaviye, eğer e, depolama semptomları da baskınsa. Burada alfa bir değerleri de hedef alacak bir non selektif. Uh, 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 the translation is not arriving to me, sorry. Okay. Tamam. Yeah, 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 okay. E, tekrar başlıyorum. E, depolama semptomları da ba baskın bir e, yaşlı hastada BPA'sı olan alfa blokör başlarken e, non selektif bir alfa blokör başlayıp alfa 1 D'leri de hedef alarak hem alfa 1 A hem alfa 1 D'leri hedef alarak depolama semptomlarına da ekstra bir katkı sağlayabilme konusunda bu bir alfa blokör seçim açısından bir e, parametre olabilir mi sizce? Uh, well, uh, alfa blokörs uh, and of course we should be careful about use of alfa blokörs and non selective alfa blokörs in elderly patients. Uh, but uh, uh, they are indicated for the improvement of avoiding and storage symptoms. We know that uh, uh, quite a few patients uh, uh, do not respond in terms of improvement of storage symptoms. And why? 30% have uh, nocturnal polyuria, and that will not improve uh, with, with alpha blockers. But if they don't have nocturnal polyuria, I think uh, uh, one good option can be the association with uh, antimuscarinic drugs. If they don't have uh, high post residual, or, or nowadays, which is much more safe uh, to use uh, uh, beta-3 agonist mirabegron uh, in association with the alpha blocker to improve the storage symptoms, of course. Mr. Cruz, çok teşekkür ediyoruz. Şimdi yeni konuşmaya geçiyoruz. Evet.